I mean, uh, let's get started. Um, Right. So uh, this um, this session is about financial services, uh, transforming the uh, industry with event stream data. Uh, for presenting this, we're going to have uh, Jeffrey Lamb, who's senior solutions engineer from Confluent, also co-founder and um, of the. Um, um, okay. So uh, okay. So uh, I think I'll let Jeff talk more about himself. Um, as everyone may know, Confluent extends the open source project, uh, producing this enterprise uh, grade cloud native platform, or event streaming platform. And of course it's really famous and used by a, a lot of the top Fortune 100 companies and top banks. So today's will, uh, discussion will be about rethinking uh, financial services um, using data in motion, this whole notion of uh, event streams, and with specific case studies from, from the region, from APAC, because I think Jeff is in Hong Kong. Um, we, we've got some questions and answers uh, from, from uh, participants. We'll come to those later. And I can see that Jeff has got a, uh, already a presentation, which I think is very useful because it will help you know, get everyone up to speed who, who's not already there. Okay, so with that, um, I'll hand over to Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi, thank you, Jonathan. Um, yeah, my name is Jeffy Lam. Um, and uh, today, actually, one thing is that I'm going to use the word uh, Kafka and Confluent interchangeably. Uh, I know, I think a lot of people know about the open source project of Apache Kafka. And uh, our company, Confluent co founders, are the original creator of Kafka. Um, and uh, we have been the company who is backing and developing uh, Kafka, making lots of contribution uh, all along. So that's why I'm, I'll be using that, uh, those two terms interchangeably. Like uh, yesterday, we have a session that talked about rethinking financial services with data in motion. And today I, is a continuity that I'm going to go through a few actual use cases that we've seen in APEC, right? The first one is about a open banking data sharing, right? That, which is a hot topic these days in the financial industry. Uh, second topic is about a uh, real-time payment solution. You know, a lot of innovation in the APEC area, definitely, right? Huge volume, a lot of innovation. And the third case is about market data sharing in real time and how security firms uh, make use of data in motion to deal with it. Uh, the last is about uh, data in motion for mainframe data, because after all, if we talk about data sharing, uh, you know, the core banking data is the most important data of any banks. Right? So um, first of all, I go through a couple of slides to recap what is data in motion and why banks need it. Right. So, so essentially, you know, we all know that banks has made huge investment in the last few decades, you know, for software that are actually very segregated stacks, right? They are not really designed for sharing, not even internally, right? And if we talk about open banking, sharing to the ecosystem or sharing to e-commerce or social media, uh, you know, it is often does not fit, right? Because they, are, they often touch from multi-channels, Right. They often require high throughput, real-time responses that touch many software stacks within the banks. Right? And, and also, if we look at the traditional data architecture, right? if you want to integrate data from different software stacks, it often involves a series of batch jobs. Right? That means uh, data will be propagated to your eventual target application, maybe T plus one, T plus two, or even more, right? Uh, which doesn't really fit the open banking or e-commerce scenario either, right? Uh, a lot of people use, uh, of course, your application or analytic application, uh, you know, want to see the things in real time and re react really fast to those ecosystem uh, transactions, especially. Um, so that's why uh, the banks are turning to another paradigm, right? Instead of thinking about data at rest, right, like database or data lake batch jobs, 
they want to think about it as data in motion, right? Because all the event we talk about in the ecosystem and 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 social media and multi-channel, you know, you expect the data and event move very fast across your stack, right? So that you can respond uh, to the end user very quickly or analyze the situation in real time, right? So the idea is that why don't we have all the core system write all the event to a centralized platform like Kafka, right? Um, in real time as they happen, right? And this platform will store the entire history of all the event that ever happened in the bank, right? So that it will expose it through API or through the native Kafka protocol to any other department who are interested to process and correlate the event in real time, or they want to play back and do in-depth analysis or machine learning so that's to make a decision or to act on it late at a later stage, right? And that's the way to break down uh, the, 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 the barrier for the previous data at rest paradigm, right? Um, and of course, all these, you want the data to be well governed uh, with discovery and lineage and data quality, et cetera, right? Now, um, let me give an example, right? Um, the first example is from a APAC bank. They are doing open banking use cases. Of course, lots of data sharing, right? Uh, by the regulators, for example, uh, customer data, account data, payment data, transaction data, balance data, uh, et cetera, right? Uh, but on top of the regulatory requirement, they also want to tap on this uh, open data economy, right? With the data sharing, there are lots of things that they can do. For example, uh, one thing that they're looking at is financial uh, cash management advisory, right? They, if they can collect all the uh, expenses or the deposit of an individual across all the bank through this sharing economy, right? They can give very good advice to increase the customer experience or to help uh, uh, all the bank customer, right? Or recommend new products or uh, reduce the credit risk, right, of the bank as well, right? So, so that's the kind of innovation that they're looking at. And, and of course, you know, naturally they're, they're, they're looking at a cloud strategy for that kind of innovation uh, uh, as well as uh, a scalable time to market kind of infrastructure. Right. Um, and at the same time, um, they are also looking at a multi-cloud uh, requirement because they believe that the regulatory will eventually require every bank to have a multi-cloud strategy so they don't rely on one uh, infrastructure. Right. And, and also, uh, they, they believe that uh, down the road, they might have different DUs in different regions or through M&A of other banks or financial services that might have the infrastructure on different cloud, right? So, so they need to plan it ahead of time from the architecture point of view, right? So uh, for, for that kind of requirement, they, 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 they feel that they need, uh, there are few capability that they really need to look at. First of all is uh, uh, how do you share the data across the on-premise and all the cloud? Right, so as to support all kinds of innovation, right? Um, no, uh, and, and, and secondly, right, uh, they are also looking at how can we leverage the best of breed between different cloud, right? For that, they are, what they're doing is that they, they look at, uh, they, they like the enterprise app stack of AWS. So they want to develop a lot of mobile apps and innovative applications on it. And they want to, they, they like the data analytics part of the Azure. So they want to put the analytics there, right? And, and as you pass the data between these stack, right? You also want to look at security, right? So, 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 so you, they want to mask the data. You want to uh, redact the data before you send the call banking data to a, AWS for the mobile apps, right? Or before you go 
before the data eventually go to the Azure cloud for data analytics, right? And, and the sharing to the open banking through Azure as well, right? So, so for that, they, they are looking for something like uh, Kafka, right? They want to have uh, used the underlying Kafka replication protocol because they already have all the core banking events stream to the on-premise uh, platform, as we talked about in the last slide. Why don't they just replicate the whole data in a single bridge to other cloud as well, right? It's because they can't do point-to-point -point data integration, right? And, and once you have that, right, you, you, they can also leverage this event streaming capability, right? Do processing as the data get, before the data get replicated, right? So as to redact the data, transform the data, or cleanse the data before they move up to, to different platforms, right? So, so the, and, and, and after they have moved these core banking data or collected or analyzed them, when they expose the data externally, right, or to internal app, they will use API management with REST API, right? So that they can take advantage of the API gateway for life cycle management, for security, et cetera, right? And of course, the, yeah. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt. There's a lot of good stuff happening there. Uh, just to clarify and take a step back in this story, um, I can see that they, 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 they had a starting point. They've progressed very fast. But what challenges did they face? I think you've already mentioned them. I'm just wondering, you know, like data replication, security, um, because they came from a legacy environment, I would guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that that's that's true. Yeah, yeah. When they're modernizing their legacy environment, right? one one thing that they typically do is trying to decouple from the legacy app, right? Using microservices and put things on the cloud, right? Uh, another challenge that they face with that is um, is the um, let me let me go through some slide. Is that as they start to build up more and more microservices with the traditional asynchronous approach, right? They find that there are more and more dependency uh, going on between the services. And especially when they mo move to multi-cloud, right? You will have different services on the cloud, on different cloud, uh, going back to the on-premises, and, and they might even go across different cloud and depend on each other, right? So, so that dependency start to get complicated and start to become like a single point of failure too, because if some services on some platform fail, then it will impact other services. It's very hard to track that and manage that and guarantee the SLA, right? So one thing that they uh, take advantage is the asynchronous event-driven approach uh, supported by the Kafka platform, right? So, so you, essentially, the design of Kafka is that the producer of the event and the consumer are completely decoupled. So they don't depend on each other. So for example, if some mortgage application user submit an application and it got to invoke many other services, right? Before it get originated and get provision, right? But as the event come along, right? The, the original producer of the event, of the, epic, of the user uh, do, can continue to do their own stuff while the events start to trigger different microservices down the street, right? And they are all independent of each other, right? And it can co choreograph as a workflow, but they are not depending on each other, right? And uh, that also uh, make the whole architecture a lot more flexible because the bank can keep on adding innovation or intermediate microservices in the workflow as it go along without impacting uh, each other, right? So, so that's the kind of, uh, deployment flexibility uh, and, and innovation flexibility and time to market that people also uh, look at, right? Actually, how does this relate to the, you know, some of these banks use mainframe offloading of services? Does this complement it? Does it replace it? Yeah, it, it's complementary, right? Uh, you know, through, uh, let, me, let me give another example. Is from another customer who is doing uh, mainframe offloading is an Asian bank, right? Uh, you know, the, the, the first that 
a lot of the time, that's the first thing the bank want to do, right? Because the mainframe has all the core banking data, you know, whatever open banking data that we talk about, like customer account balances, a lot of them come from the mainframe, of course. And, and so, so what they do is they, uh, they leverage a, uh, the, the Kafka connector, conference connectors, right? Which, uh, can work with the mainframe, right? You know, for example, IBM has a version of the, uh, InfoSphere's data stage replicator that can uh, put the mainframe vSAM, ISM, or DB2 data directly on conference platform, right? And once you're on the conference platform as a stream of event, as the core banking transaction happen, right? You can do exactly the same thing as any other system, right? To put things on the conference platform, which you can do transformation in real time. You can start joining and correlating with all other data from other sources. And then uh, eventually, if you want, you can, through Replicator, you can replicate the, the data you need to the Google Cloud, AWS, or Azure Cloud. Uh, you know, uh, you, can, you can sync it into different uh, data sources or application through uh, conference connectors as well, like S3 or, or, or JDBC connector or, or HDFS connector so that other application on the cloud can start using it on microservices. So, so it's all connected, right? Because, because of that single, you know, uh, uh, data platform that allows event streaming into it in real time. So another use cases that we have is a South, South Asian bank, uh, which does real-time payment solutions uh, with the Kafka platform, right? So, so what they do is that they, they know they have hundreds of millions of transactions every day, right? And those real-time payment need to happen really fast, right? But there are a lot of uh, business values that you can capture from from those data as well, right? Uh, so what happened is that the pay, the, the, the pay always often go through a payment service provider like Google Play, right, for example, right? Uh, and then it hit, hit the bank, right? And eventually it, go, it has to go really fast, right? Uh, do fraud detection, do the payment processing transaction, and then go through the payment and hit the national payment infrastructure. Uh, that will do the uh, complete the transaction to another bank, right? Or or to do clearance, etc., right? And all these need to happen really, really fast. And they will use the REST API to achieve that because it just have to happen right away. Uh, it gotta be synchronous, and you gotta notify the payer uh, very quickly, right? But there are a lot of things that need to be captured because the bank also want to tap into the, these kind of payment service provider in ecosystem to understand the behavior of the payer, right? There are so many things that you can find out from the behavior, like what kind of things that they're purchasing, what time of day, what region, you know, uh, uh, what kind of product, you know, what is the trending, etc. right? So all these just built on top of the 100 million of transactions per day, it become billions uh, event every day. And you gotta have a platform like Kafka to be able, able to handle that very quickly in near real time, right? So, so Jeffrey, to... Jeffrey, I uh, just, just sorry to interrupt here is, I think you're making uh, some uh, interesting ideas here about the difference between event streaming and also traditional messaging systems. So are you, is, is the understanding correct that mm -hmm. traditional mess messaging systems can't do this and that with event streaming and APIs, it, it, it's possible? Is, what, what? Yeah, yeah, that, that's what a lot of our bank customers find because, you know, actually a lot of them initially it, it has tried uh, traditional messaging system like uh, RapidMQ and all that, right? But, you know, it comes to a point that the scalability become a huge issue, right? You know, uh, it, it just cannot handle billions of events a day, right? You know, it, it, uh, a lot of customers come to us, they have uh, hundreds of uh, message brokers, some have thousands, some even have uh, uh, 10,000 of 
event brokers, right? And they really need come to a point and say they can't scale anymore, right? That's the first thing. And the second challenges that they have is that um, those messaging system do not store messages. It, it is under the paradigms of destructive read, which means after you read the message, it's gone. It just want to deliver a message from one point to another. That's it, right? But without storing the message like Kafka, you can't really correlate the messages in time, right? You, you, you want to see the trending, right? You, there are a lot of, of analytics that you can do if you know the trending across time. And you cannot do analytic across space as well. Right? You can correlate different messages coming in from different sources. For that, you lose a lot of opportunity for innovation or, or getting insight, which is the very point of tapping into this kind of a payment ecosystem, right? So, so that's that's why they 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 want to to use the kind of data in motion uh, platform uh, with with Kafka accompanying the API management lifecycle that we talk about, right? Yeah, and another example, good example for, for that, right, is the uh, market data real time sharing, right, uh, and the security firms uh, that leverage this kind of data as well, right. Um, when data streaming, right, you want to do a dissemination, for example, index dissemination, or do processing to analyze the data, like the calculate the derivative price, uh, et cetera, of, uh, of the counter uh, transactions, that, that kind of stuff, right? Like when, when the data comes in, right, of course, the initial transaction, you might want to, it to be completed in nanosecond through the traditional messaging platform, right? But after that, there are tons of analytics, just like what we talk about in the payment platform that, that you want to do, right? Uh, and, and analyze the data in real time. Right, and this is where uh, the storage, the capability of able to store the message and process it in real time takes place. Right, and and this is where they uh, they will analyze the data and they will combine with the the actual transaction after it is completed and combine by with a lot of reference data uh, to to make that happen, and also. A lot of the banks have lots of trading desks in the past and have segregated data, right? Uh, we have a global bank that has more than 70 trading desks, right? Essentially, we are talking about the real-time event happen as seven plus, 70 plus software stacks and how can you combine them, correlate them and make use of the data to uh, facilitate not only the analysis but also the backend uh, operation to the clearing houses and all that are very very important to the bank. Right? So, so this is another good example that I want to share. So, so, so Jeffrey, just to to wrap up, I think you've talked about the three three case studies. You've also talked about legacy. Yeah. Um, we've we've sort of come to the top of the session at eleven thirty. I know some people have to go to other sessions. Um, yeah. So what I want to do is the chat has been open. If you've got any questions, please put them in the chat. We'll be around here for the next five minutes or so. Um, Jeffrey, how could people contact you? I know that uh, there's going to be virtual uh, uh, partner village and, and, yeah. and virtual booths. Um, what, what would you suggest for people to, 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 to take as a next step on this to, to see whether or how, how whether this is relevant or how hopefully they can see where this is relevant, but how to investigate more? Yeah, um, yeah, they, they can always, they're always welcome to come to us. Uh, you know, I, I can uh, put my email here so that um, oh. people can contact me. Uh, yeah. If I can just put in on the check. Yeah, if you if you don't mind, uh, you know these things go very fast. These these workshops, it'd be great to have that that interaction if you if 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 you can. Right. Um, do you have any sort of? Um, sorry, I'm I'm rushing you along here, <laughs> but uh, obviously this is a very powerful um, uh, approach to solving problems, you know, and modernizing systems. Uh, would Would you have any sort of final words just to leave it with you? Um, I think that. Uh, uh, the banks really have to look into uh, another paradigm, definitely, before they get prepared for the open 
data economy, right? And uh, you gotta think about a holistic approach uh, that can tie everything from your mainframe to cloud and in real time as well, right? So for that, uh, we we will be very much enjoy to have a discussion with you. You know, I uh, we have a lot of customer has go through probably common uh, experience as your bank, like the journey to cloud, uh, going through real time multi channel in uh, uh, experiences and also like a multi-cloud journey as well, right? Or microservices journey as well. So, so we are we are here to to share our experience with you, and hopefully we can help you. That's what that's wonderful. And as as you say, look, this this is just being on the front foot. They may regulate. The regulators may say a hybrid cloud approach is needed, and then then you know it's it's too late already. So it's good to to have these conversations um, at events like this. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much, Jeffrey. I I, I love the topic, um, and uh, it, uh, you know we'll hang around in the chat for a while just in case some other people come in and have any questions. So with that, I'll formally end end the uh, end the session. Um, but we'll be around here if it's okay, Jeff, for for another five or so minutes. Would that be okay? Yeah, that that's great. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. That, Thanks everyone for attending um, and look forward to, to interacting with you. Thank you, bye. Bye, Jeff. Yes, uh, bye. So I should leave now? Or? Yeah, you can, you, you can leave. I can leave and then <laughs> I will- leave. The chat will still be on. Yeah, okay, yeah, thank you. Thank exactly. you. Cheers, bye.